Welcome back. My next guest is Nestor J. Aparicio, always bringing the heat, bringing the noise on Baltimore Positive, WNST 1570 AM. Nestor, welcome in. Hey, um, March Madness. March comes in like a lion, right? I say, yeah. right? It comes in like a lion, and uh, the Terps are ro- roaring from uh, College Park. Kevin Willard's got him doing some great things down there. Our buddy Bruce Posner is uh, over the moon with the performance of the Maryland Terrapins. You know, Posner's probably uh, ready to admit it's still basketball season. It's not fully lacrosse season yet, no, right? No, no. He, he, well, you know, he <laughs> loves them both. He loves all things that are Terps, and uh, – He's in his glory on it right now. Both squads doing very, very well, and uh, he's getting a lot of a lot of uh, attention from people all around the country as he's the most knowledgeable Terps uh, analyst that I know. This was always one of my favorite times of the year, and you know I was never a lacrosse guy, but I always love March Madness. Yeah. I mean, I and and the hockey play also be getting focused in, right? NBA, you'd focus all dial, in. All dialed in. Yep. But spring training, when the Orioles were the Orioles here and games were on TV and we like blah, 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 or games were on the radio, we there, 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 there's some energy about spring. And I'm sure you feel that at the dealership as well. This whole spring, from a sports perspective, Lamar, it, it's such a giant story, you know, outside of Baltimore. And everywhere I go, somebody wants an opinion from me. And, you know, I, I'm trying to, and I watch the, press conference from Indianapolis and I've attended those on Wednesday many times I say this is as big a story as we're going to have around here I've been doing this 31 years I don't remember anything that's this ongoing the Ray Lewis Atlanta story was a huge story right it was but there was no Joe Flacco story he won the Super Bowl they gave him a deal and he came back and we played football and there was the only story that year was Angelo screwing them on uh, playing the game here on Thursday to kick off the season right that was that was the big story for six months here but there wasn't a story we knew the outcome right I don't know that we know the outcome in this case and Luke has leaned on me this week and I'm sure he'll lean on you (laughs) you and I are the only two people that are out in front of it and and when people ask me why do you feel that way and i'm like i there's a litany of evidence to me including the text from john harbaugh the ota weekend but there's a litany of evidence to me and and this is the new term i'm using this is this week's term this is my march term all right let's have it ready bruised feelings yeah you alluded to this when Lamar held the sign up. The morning after that, you and I did radio. The morning after that we game. We did. We did. And I thought the sign was fake. I literally, when I saw it, I'm nope. like, that's a meme. And because nope. I didn't see it. I turned the game off at that point. I was watching press conference. And you said that morning something like, he's gone. Yeah. You, you literally said, he's gone. His heart's gone. What do you, you had something really poignant I, I, you said about I, it. I did. His his it was heart something was, poetic. His, yeah. Uh, good luck with that one. Uh, me, I'll go back and I find said. it. But you you but, literally yeah, but, said but something he, about yeah. his heart has changed and he's not all in anymore. He his, wasn't, and I, I didn't think he was in the entire season. He wasn't running with the same reckless abandon uh, as he was in prior years. He was making business decisions all over the place. Um, he wasn't as explosive. He was quicker to go down. He was quicker to get rid of the ball. He was playing not to get hurt. And when you do that, Ness, you, you, you're not giving the best to your team. And it also opens you up to getting hurt, which is exactly what happened to him. I'm not saying it's his fault. I'm not blaming him. Uh, but um, there's a right way to negotiate and, and a wrong way. And to me, you know, go see Steve Bashotti, Go see Eric DaCosta. Close the door. You can scream, curse at each other. But when you start holding up fans as props about pay the man and you start uh, saying things on the social media and giving out your own injury reports, Nestor. Uh, again, it, it that's not how to do business. It just isn't. And I don't care how young he is or who's in his ear, but there's a right way to go about things and a wrong way to go about things. Yeah. And I think that they're done with him. And, and my, my, you know, the, the, the Harbaugh's eyes moving back and forth when he's, I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. Right. Um, meanwhile, the and- Co- meanwhile, the Costa says we have four to five scenarios. Pe- people have said, you know, the Ravens hands are tied and uh, they're they're in no man's land. The Costa just confirmed what you and I have been saying all along. Well, I they- don't believe the Costa. His lips are moving like I, yeah. I, I swear I am with all they've, these guys at this point. You know, they've, had they've comp- lied about to me about the most fundamental truths yeah. of my life. So I don't lie about anything. 
but they have well, contingency plans. Or they do. They, there's a plan B, C, D, E, F, and G, and and it should be just like Lamar's got a plan B, C, D, E, F, and G. They all have. Everybody's got a plan, an exit plan, and so do the Ravens. Dennis, I know it's your show this week, but I I I, I had this top of mind, and I had this with Luke. And I, you know, the thing that's keeping me up at night, I, if I were at the press conference on Indianapolis on behalf of the Baltimore sports fans, uh, on behalf of WNST, <laughs> I, I, the questions I would have legitimately asked, and if I were with Eric and I checked, Eric and I went through a two and a half hour, two hour and 40 minute breakfast uh, last February 16th, very quietly mm-hmm. off, but, but, but we, we spent, so I, every off season, I spent hours with Eric DaCosta privately, hours. Uh, and all that will become public because it just did. But uh, I would say this. If if I had a question to ask him, a silver bullet question, or if I would have been at the podium in Indianapolis, I would have said, if you tag him, are you concerned that he won't play for the tag? And let it, let him dance and you know, sweat. But that's no, a legitimate – that's, that's a question I need an answer to. 100%. 100%. Okay, and, the, and then the other part of this, it, behind closed doors, and this is where it makes me sweat if I'm him. This thing keeps me up at night. And this is the thing I bet they spent a long – it was a three-cigar conversation down in Jupiter last mm. month. Come on. It's where I think it is. Bashadi got the cigar out. All right, Eric. We're done with him. How are we going to trade him? What, 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 what's the scenario? Yep. Now, and I think about how many people it took in the Lamar – or Deshaun Watson situation last year. How many people in Charlotte tried Atlanta? How many people were in on – how many Pat Moriarty's? How many doctors? How many lawyers? How many quarterback coaches? Like all the people in on it and then the contract people in on Deshaun wants what? Who's getting it? Who's the agent? Who's on the phone? We have to get on the phone with Mr. Robbie or no, not Robbie. Uh, 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 it's Ross. I'm three owners ago with the yeah, Dolphins. There you go. But but uh, Stephen Ross, we got to get on the phone with Arthur Blank. We got to get on the phone with Mrs. Benson, whoever's running the team. I don't know. Um, and, and we need their approval to to go. And I would think the first thing for Eric right now and Eric's the most sophisticated guy there is. It's it's March 1st, right? Eric knows what teams might want him, and they've called Eric, and Eric starts by saying, look, if you're not giving him 230, I've sat with the kid, Yep. and you're going to have to sit with the kid because there's nobody else to sit with. It's him and his mother, or maybe it's not his mother, or whatever. He won't talk to you unless it's 230 million. So if it's not 230, we, us talking about draft yeah, picks. we're wasting and, time. We're wasting time. And I don't know where those communicate, the real business community, the lawyers, the, the money people, because he doesn't apparently have any. And the players associations behind him, obviously, oh, in a oh, big way right now. Oh, but I'm absolutely. wondering how this fundamentally can get orchestrated because the oh. Ravens are going to have to be such a huge part. They're going to have to be his agent and and the dealer because they want if they want out, they better do every, and they're doing everything they can at the podium, shining it all up. But if they're getting down to dealing, this is not an easy e- thing to do at all. Not at all. It's not, Nestor. And you talk about his morale. He, he, the fact that they're talking about a tag infuriates him, I'm sure, right? Whether it's a non exclusive tag, which is 32 million, right? I mean, he's going to, he would never sign that tag. He will not play on the $32 million tag. The forty-five million exclusive tag, Nestor, he won't sign that until maybe the last second, if he does at all. The fact he doesn't have that fully guaranteed contract he wants already has infuriated him and has caused significant calluses between him and the Ravens. I've said all along that if he wants to be a Raven, he'll be a Raven. It's up to him. It's not up to the Ravens. Ravens have put money on the table. It's not enough for him. Fine, but it's up to him to stay to remain a Raven. Or get traded someplace else. And they I would think him. Eric DaCosta goes to bed every day thinking, I have not insulted Lamar Jackson. I have not insulted him. He offered him the second richest contract in NFL history. Of course he hasn't. But if but if, if if Lamar Jackson's perception is that he has, look, maybe he wants out of Baltimore. I don't know how many people. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm more in that direction, yeah. brother. You know, I mean, the Charm more I City, see this. But, we're Charm City, but you know what? In Florida, right? He, he's a smart guy. He wants to be a billionaire. He doesn't want to give half of his money to the state, right? So if if it's it's not going to be Jackson, but Tampa Bay needs a quarterback, 
right? Miami may be looking to move away from Tua. So he's looking to to make money and keep the bulk of his money. And that's to me, that's the question I would ask him is, do you want to be in Baltimore? And if he says yes, then I did it- ask him that. The last question I had before Chad Steele kicked me out. Go check. Don't laugh. That's true. And what that's did the he question say? I asked. What did the he last say? question I asked. Oh, I, I, I love my team. I love Baltimore. I love, go I love go Baltimore. watch. Right. It was J- well, it was June. He, he, he loves the last he, day of the mandatories. Yeah. I asked that question. Do you want to be a Raven, Lamar? Right. All right. Well, he wanted to be a Raven, but he didn't want to go to the OTAs. He wanted to be a Raven, but he didn't travel with the team to Cincinnati for the playoff game, right? So, again, there, there's you you can say that you love me, but you got to show me, right? I'm from Mississippi. I and I Missouri, said to rather, Luke, Missouri, not Mississippi, Missouri. I digress. You know, I mean, you and I always talk about humility and running a dealership and being you're all you're you're out talking to real people all day long and doing what you do at Coons Ball Report. Too, too, too real. Yeah, it's it, some days it is right. Bashani and DaCosta and Harbaugh, I think when the door shuts down in Jupiter, they're like. We made that kid. We picked him. Th- we, he's the fifth quarterback. Yeah, like we, we are going to go get another quarterback. We're gonna. Of we only have five draft are. picks. We need to get a couple more. We, of you know. So are. this week at the combine, these quarterbacks, people are like, who's going to be the quarterback? One of these guys, and they might not right. be very good next year. And that you know who's okay with that? Steve Bashotti's okay with that because he didn't spend two hundred fifty million dollars on hey. a quarterback he didn't want. Hey, Nestor. Uh, you know, I'm I'm Steve now. Hey, Nestor, cigar in the mouth, Nestor. That coordinator we got, Munkin, didn't didn't he went to a national championship with that kid, uh, Stetson Bennett? Can we just draft Bennett? I know he'll probably be a free agent. Just draft him. Take your last draft pick and let's 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 win a championship with Stetson Bennett, a quarterback. I can hear that coming from his mouth. Yeah, you know, I from from what I know about Steve and how badly, you know, he 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 wanted uh, Matt Ryan, you know, because Matt Ryan was the best quarterback in that draft, right? Yep. Yep. I, I, you know, and now that he's won with Joe Flacco and now that he's won and, and given Flacco more money than he probably feels like he should have. Right. I mean, he feels like he lost that negotiation, even though he won the Super Bowl. So I'm sure he'd say, I, I feel OK about it. I feel OK about that. <laughs> but, deal. you know, but they let go of Dilfer. So they're even for them. <laughs> they let go of the guy that should have kept my opinion. Of course, it's an unpopular opinion, but. Um, I was in that here and now, and I watched Trent Dilfer go and play in Seattle and Cleveland. What like, and, and I am not, and I've watched the, the I've watched the Super Bowl game a whole bunch now, right? And I go back and I watch that, and I'm like, mm, mm, mm. Right, right. So, so get a better. Receivers. I love me some Trent Dilfer. I do. I love me yeah. some Trent Dilfer. But even in retrospect, and this isn't any pro Billick. I don't have any reason to kiss Billick's ass at this point, right? Like, I, I, Gerback, you know. They didn't know where his heart was, right? Like he didn't, they didn't really want to play he, football. He didn't have a heart. He didn't want to play football. But he, he won a playoff heart. game and he, he, had them in Pittsburgh in a game where they weren't uh, the better he, team. He was the tin man. He didn't have a heart. And and Dilfer was all heart and blood and guts and who well, you want to be. Look, your, DeCosta he, he, was around for that. He wants to make sure that doesn't happen again, right? I mean, a, he was a field general. He was. The and conundrum so, happens the day after they trade him and, the, and or the minute after they trade him. And I told Luke, I said to Luke, your fingers are on the WNST tech service brought to you by uh, Coons Baltimore Ford. Are you really, will, will you really be shocked the moment your, your fingers are typing that he's been traded to the Detroit Lions or Atlanta, wherever it's going to be we pick, pick team X, wherever, like you should be fully prepared to do that and not shock the day that happens. Because Luke should have four I'm not going to be shocked to, to receive Luke, it. Luke should have four or five scripts ready, just like the Casa does. <laughs> Luke should have four or five. That way he could just hit the button, baby. All he's got to do is just change the team name if he has to, right, if need be. But that's what he should do. Because, um, <laughs> you know, it's it's coming. It just is. It feels that way. It, it, it feels, feels that way to me. It really does. I, I mean, don't I, care what they say. They're going to – You know, but the one thing I would like to see, I would love to see Lamar Jackson in a Todd Munkin uh, offense for one year just to see what he looks like because Munkin does put his best players in space. And here's the best space player, in, in my opinion, in NFL history. History. And he was put in the box by Greg Roman. So I would hate to see him go someplace else, have a coordinator that opens things up for him, and he just goes bananas. And, and he's league MVP again. And that's a conundrum that the Ravens are facing right now because and that's why I think he should play at least one. They should bite the bullet, do the exclusive franchise tag on him, keep him. He shows up great. He doesn't show up great. But he'll show up at $45 million, And let's see what he looks like. And you know what? And if he lays an egg – you move away from him. But if he, if he blows up under the system and maybe they get him a wide receiver that can separate and stay healthy, 
You never know what, what he looks like. But, but me as yeah. an analyst and as a fan, that's what I want to see. You know, being thrown out of the league this year and not going to the Super Bowl and not talking as much about football as I probably would have liked to or as I have the last 30 years, the free age and, and the fact that Lamar, 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 there's no oxygen for anything else, right? Like, not as a Ravens fan, but not to get my head around all of these other players and putting my head into the combine the last day, day and a half, seeing DaCosta, seeing Harbaugh, and even DaCosta mentioning to some degree, the depth at cornerback and where these positions are and that they only have five draft picks for now until they deal Lamar, right? And the the amazing part of this is all 31 other moving parts have all of these moving parts and new Eric Bieniemy's in Washington and all these things that are happening. It's a really exciting couple of weeks for change, not just Lamar Jackson change and Ravens change, but just so many things happening around the league. And you've always loved the draft, right? If you love the draft, you love the combine. I've been to a dozen combines. I've loved the combine enough to spend a month of my life in Indianapolis, more than a month of my life in Indianapolis, in the worst month of the year in Indianapolis, uh, walking around tunnels like a like a gerbil, like a hamster uh, through a mall. Uh, But nonetheless, couldn't convince you to go. I did make it sound dreamy at one point. I you thought did. I had Look, you. I was, I was I close. I thought I had you for a minute. I, was I really close. did. I was really close. Well, you would have loved it because they before they screwed it up. Now, now it's right. just this homogenous. It's, it's not even worth going to. I don't but disagree with this. This time of the year, from will we, won't we sign our own guys? Will Calais Campbell? Will he, won't he? Did we sign Roquan? Okay, we, you know, the, all of those check boxes for the Ravens. Every team has all of those. It's fun watching the Jets do this. Derek Carr mating call, right? You know what I mean? And figuring out who's coming back and where. And and the next couple of weeks are significant. I mean, yeah, the Super Bowl was three weeks ago, and it feels like, oh, we have no football. I feel like there's a lot of football oh. the next eight weeks because of this chatter on Lamar, how it affects everything else. And then, oh, they're going to pick football players in six weeks, seven weeks, right? Yep. It'll be a definitely a domino effect, right? The, by the Baltimore Ravens in the thick of it. No matter which direction they go to, so it's it's gonna be explosive. It's gonna well, you know, my feeling is we'll still be talking about this eight weeks from now, Nestor. Lamar Jackson? Yes. Yeah. I no, no, no. He has to go before the draft. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't be surprised. Maybe said the farmer. No, 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 no. Maybe no. said the farmer. We'll no, see. no, no, no. We'll, he... <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see how many dance partners he has. You know, they're all they all have to be talking. They all have to have a sense of that where this is going to go. Don't you think? I mean, yeah. I, I absolutely yeah. felt they like all... with DaCosta yeah. was up there, looked very composed and looked very much like, they know. all right, I know these are the three teams. These are the, you know, this, this is what they we know. could do. This is what we're not willing to do until I get that extra fourth round draft pick this year. So I get another pick this year. We're not dealing Lamar. I don't care how much money he gets. I'll, all Eric cares about is his draft picks. That's, that's where they are with Lamar right now. Where they are with Lamar is what can I get for him? I don't Not know how much do I have to give them to sign him because they've already been there for two years and they can't get it done. You know, I saw a recent Michael Vick interview where he, his advice to Lamar would be to sign with the Ravens. Stay a Raven. Because he thinks with the Ravens, organizationally speaking, that Lamar Jackson can, can win a Super Bowl or two. But that's uh, an advice from that's advice from Michael Vick, who played for the Atlanta Falcons. Um, so he, his recommendation to Lamar is to sign the contract. Do the deal. I, I think there might be a point where a guy like Michael Vick would say they love you more than anybody else loves you. And you know what? I don't think they love him anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I think there was no, a point see, where they that, loved him. That would blow a lot of people's minds. doesn't blow my mind, but it, a lot of people are like, well, what do you mean? Oh, they used to love him a lot, but you know, things have happened in the relationship. Bruised so, feelings. And what, what did you call you, you? You called it something else. You had some other d- some wisdom I, I for it. Know, man. I, it. It was earlier in the segment. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'll go back and listen to it. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate you. But it's going to play out the way it's supposed to. And everybody's calm and everybody's going to move forward. And we'll be talking about whatever. Well, spring training, spring but it, abounds. But it's, a, but it's also a tired story, right? We had, Don't we have like Lamar fatigue at this point? It's just. Oh, everything. my God. I had Lamar fatigue before he got <sighs> injured. Ah, right. Lamar this, Lamar that. What's he going to do? I don't know. He, I, don't think he, I, I don't think he knows. I mean, there, I'm, I'm sure his days, he doesn't know what he's going to do. He, Luke and I got into it, and we were 
fatigued in in a fatigue conversation, uh, you know, this week, uh, 45 minutes into this Lamar debate with him. And he said something about like, you know, who's going to play quarterback? And, you know, they're going to have trouble selling tickets. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> they already had <laughs> Lamar did not sell tickets like like I'd love that he, oh. he should have sold tickets. He was exciting enough to sell tickets. The brand of football oh. they played was the most exciting brand of football they've played in a long, long time. If you don't love defense, right? Now. He had a great defense. But like they didn't sell tickets. He, so he I said. See- he didn't see the uh, the 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 uh, fans dressed up as empty empty seats at the at uh, M&T Bank Stadium. Listen, this is it where Luke is better than you. Full. This is where Luke is better than even you and I. Before I could even get done spitting it out, Luke said it could get a lot worse. And okay. I'm like, it could okay. Get, I, I said I've traveled in this league. It could Look, get a lot worse. But I think also the league has changed. You don't you know you don't need the the seventy one thousand. Uh, seat stadiums anymore i think 45 to 50 is plenty big because of the streaming services and the young people and how they like to watch the games and whatnot so i don't think it's a condemnation under 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 ravens i think it just they don't have the passion that we had that nestor the younger generation they just don't well you know it's not the place to be anymore right and they're trying to make it the place to be and they've had this They've had the biggest star in the sport, right? Right? Like, I mean, or not? Well, very exciting, but a very exciting player. I mean, the kind of guy that you're. He he was must see. He still is when he's healthy, um, as a football player. But the younger generation just has that they haven't embraced football in the manner that that we have. Think about what you just said. Must see. No, he wasn't must see because they didn't feel like they must see it. I felt that way. I felt like every time he touched the ball, anything can happen. But that doesn't mean that they can win the Super Bowl either, right? Look, you got to have – look, 31 teams uh, can't win the Super Bowl every year. You have to have a lot of luck uh, going for you. Patrick Mahomes helps. Uh, yeah, that's that's where I'd bet. Well, and I, I would also say – Bashadi would say we couldn't win a Super Bowl when we were paying a $15 million. How are we going to do a paying a fifty? Again, you have to have you're, – you're making the playoffs, and anytime you make the playoffs, you have a shot. But you also have to have your quarterback healthy for your playoff run in December, and that's that's the other side of the coin with Lamar. He hasn't been there, and you can't. I never that. thought it was a great idea to have a quarterback run into linebackers. I'll keep going. I I've said You've that for said that. five You've years. Said that. I've just never thought that was a great idea, and no. I, I think after watching it for five years, that's another thing. Aside from all the other drama yeah. with Lamar and AJ, like all that, it, it, it's it's the um, him saying. I'm your guy. You guarantee that if I get hurt, you're going to take care of me. And them saying, mm-hmm, you run into too many linebackers yeah. for me to make that deal. Well, strategically speaking, that's true. They moved away from Greg Roman a year too late. Had they moved away from Greg Roman the prior year, brought in a progressive offensive coordinator, gotten Lamar some some toys at wide receiver, perhaps would have, we would have seen what he was or what he wasn't uh, by now. But we don't know that because he hasn't been in the wide open pro style offense since he got to the Ravens. And did they enhance his talents or did they hold him back? That's that's the the that's the two hundred million dollar question. Well, we'll find out. Is he going to go down gonna, to Tampa and just plug the gonna, car in and and, and go for a out. ride for two Super Bowls? We're going to find out, right? Well, not if not if Greg Roman's the OC. <laughs> we'll, see more, <laughs> we'll see more of the same, right? But let, let's see what Lamar can do in a different offense. We but we saw it in college though. He played in, in a pro style, wide open. Offense in college on, under Bobby Petrino, and he was phenomenal. He really was as a passer and as a runner. He was phenomenal in 2019. Here, he's phenomenal and, and when then, he has great and players then the around league, him. The league caught up a little bit, right? They started, you know, caging him and, and putting speedy linebackers and safeties and around him, and he just couldn't and then break he the had to ones. do more. And we're he waiting had to do on more. That. And yeah, he he wasn't Patrick Mahomes, but then again, there's only one. He, Patrick Mahomes is one of one. I keep I keep going back to that. Well, it's your show, man. You know, I'm just buying time. You know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, I'm just here. I'm just here hanging out, waiting to get to Drug City, do the Maryland Crab Cake Tour. I'm taking the Crab Cake Tour back out on the road. It's my dad's birthday this weekend. Which All right, is really well, happy birthday, to Dad. Um, on Sunday, uh, March 5th. Is so where are you going to be? Where are you going to be at? I'm at Drug City Friday uh, doing the Crab Cake Tour okay. with one of my with my middle school music teacher, Mr. Calvin Statham, uh, okay. is coming out, and um, my dear friend Dr. Ingrid Kolstadt is coming from my seventh grade class. So we're going to do a little Ode to Dundalk, uh, and then we're going to be on uh, Wednesday at one of your ah. favorite places, Fadley's, uh, back at the old market. It's, old, it's still the only thing left in the old market what? is Fadley's. Uh, I'm going to be there on Wednesday morning. It might might be the last time. 
are they moving to Catonsville? I mean, uh, move, they, they are, but they, I've, they're I've moving seen... to the new market too. Okay. They're, they're a few locations. Yes. Yeah, because I've seen the, the the signs up for a while now. We were at the state fair the other day, and uh, they've and had issues the in the building and things that it okay. used to be a wallpaper place, and they had to have some extra. I got you. But they're doing it like big time. They're doing like a showroom oh, in the second floor. I can't so they're, wait. They're doing a lot of building, is what they're doing. And I, I love, I love Catonsville, Frederick Avenue. That's my Frederick Road. That's my place. I'm taking you over to Beaumont for a steak free lunch one day. What we'll do. I've been there many times. I, I, they know me my they know me my, my first name there. Oh, you're me. you're a Beaumont guy, oh, are you? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I love all those places there. Yeah, oh, well, Jennings it, Jennings Cafe Ships, Beaumont. It's, it's made Coons Ford a better place to be hey, for lunch, state, ain't it? Absolutely. State fair. I mean, I, it's seven I can get there in seven minutes from Coons Ford of Baltimore. There you go. Right there, uh, right right down for uh what, what, what uh, Rolling Road. Right down Rolling Road. Right, right down Rolling Road, man. I'm right there. All Boom. Right, good enough. All well, right, I, I I will have you next week. I'm going full full bore back to doing sort of normal okay. radio. Uh, we got the crab cake tour happening. I'm going to have more of those. We got um, Terps in the in the March Madness. I mean, it just there's a lot going on. Baltimore Positive is alive and well. I need a little time. I had taken a vacation in a year and a half. So uh, I took a couple days okay. and um, and it was weird because like I didn't get to travel and do Raven stuff. Right. So no New Orleans, no Tampa. The things that I had done the last 26 years of my life. I didn't get a chance to do this year, but I took a little bit of time in February, a little bit of Springsteen, saw some oh, family, you dude, know. Tickets are insane. I logged in today and they're like a thousand bucks a piece. They're you don't already want to do this, that. They're, don't I, do I'm that. not. I can't. No, you get night of the show, you're going to go with me. We're going to be fine. But they're already uh, on the secondary market for grand a piece. I mean, it's insane. All right. Well, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't I know. Do that. I see. I, I, I told somebody I know a guy. That's you. I was gonna say I'm a guy. <laughs> you're, the, you're the you're the guy. You're the guy because I'd guy. like to go to the show. Well, you know, there's two of them. There's the arena and the stadium, right? Okay, so either one. I like to see Bruce at 73. I like to see him. Well, well, the outdoor will be much more inexpensive in the end. Okay. So I would okay. tell you plan your September 9th, and he's gonna do a bunch of outdoor shows. And um, yeah, I've seen the show four times in the beginning. He's starting to mix things in. He's adding, yeah. and that's very very but, common. But, for but him you know to, what? That's a bunch strive. of garbage. All those people buying and, and, and reselling them on a the second day market for a premium. That's 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 crap. It really is. That's Ticketmaster and Live Nation, and they're a monopoly, and ah, they that's, act that's like horrible. a monopoly. That's horrible because it, it it prices your hardcore fans out of the market. Don't talk to the Taylor Swift people. Oh, I know. I mean, I love to see him, but I'm not paying Gransky to see him. I'm not. I'm not. You're, doing I mean, that. you're not. You're not going to have to. It's the good news. You're not going to have right. to. All Supply right. and demand says that. How many people around here are going to pay Grant? Don't worry about it. I can tell you one who isn't. <laughs> well, this is supply and demand of Steve Bashotti saying two hundred thirty-two million. Who in here is going to do that? Right. You know, right, you know right, that's right, what right. Steve Bashotti's doing right now. Same thing you're doing with Springsteen tickets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Good stuff. Any more glory days around here, Dennis? All right, my man. Keep doing great things. Uh, I'll be out on Tenth Avenue, freezing out. All right. All right, pal. There he goes, Mister Jeff Reese here, here at fifteen seventy AM. WNST will take a quick break and come back right after this.